Hi friends, Whitney here. Welcome back to another episode of The Word. Today we're talking about a topic that is often misunderstood in the nutrition community, intuitive eating and the subcategory of mindful eating. These dietary approaches were created as a backlash to traditional diets to help people gain confidence and normalize their eating patterns. Some critics bash intuitive eating, calling it an excuse to eat whatever you want and claiming that it leads to an unhealthy diet. The truth is, while intuitive eating does allow for the consumption of all foods, even those that are objectively less nutritious, it's not intended to justify a poor diet. So let's dive in. Intuitive eating is an approach to nutrition where you listen to your body to help you decide what to eat and how much to eat instead of using food rules as your guide. This includes honoring food cravings and recognizing your hunger and fullness cues. It's a pretty simple concept. If you're hungry for a particular food, you eat it, even if that food is typically considered a treat. What's that? You want a donut? You got it, sister. When you're no longer hungry, you stop eating. Unfortunately, it's not always that simple in practice. Years of following society's recommendations of what and how to eat and falling prey to fad diets has left most of us way out of touch with our bodies. Have you ever found yourself thinking any of the following? I really want a sandwich, but I already had bread at breakfast. I didn't work out today, so I shouldn't have dessert. I can't eat that cookie because I had a cookie yesterday and I'm trying to watch my weight. These are all maladaptive thoughts rooted in food rules and diet mentality. Do they help you manage your weight? No. Counterintuitively, research shows that they lead to greater preoccupation with food, overeating or binge eating, and a negative body image. Intuitive eating seeks to correct these patterns of thinking. By allowing yourself the freedom to enjoy foods that are not necessarily the most nutrient dense, but that provide other important benefits like pleasure, food loses its power. In turn, you become less preoccupied with food and better able to regulate your intake and provide your body with the nutrients it needs to thrive. It can be hard to wrap your head around this at first, but the gist is by allowing yourself to eat that cookie when you feel like it, you're more likely to not eat a plate full of cookies later. And you're also better able to choose to not eat a cookie when you're not hungry another time. This is because when you're used to shaming yourself for wanting certain foods, you just want those foods more. It's the you want what you can't have effect. Once you can have a food whenever you want it, it loses its power and appeal. Again, it's hard to believe this is true until you've experienced it yourself. And also, it takes time. But once you get good at it, your body will end up craving objectively nutritious foods just as much as pleasurable foods, and even start to think of nutritious foods as pleasurable foods too. The goal of intuitive eating is to let your body be your guide. So now let's talk about mindful eating, a type of intuitive eating. Mindful eating is a tool to help you reconnect with your body's innate feelings of hunger and fullness. This is a skill that we're born with, but we lose as we age and manipulate our food intake through food rules. If you've ever been on a diet where you had to track and limit your calories, that's the opposite of listening to your hunger and fullness cues. Here are a few mindful eating tips to help you reconnect. Number one, plate your food. Instead of stuffing your face straight from the refrigerator or munching right out of the snack bag, take the time to put your meal or snack on a plate with proper utensils. This simple act is a symbol of respect for your meal and for your body. And while you're at it, make it pretty. Taking the time to style your plate can increase your appreciation of your meal and result in greater satisfaction. Number two, sit down. After you plate your food, take it to the table, not the couch, not the kitchen counter, not on a walk around the block. It's not a dog. Sitting down at a table helps you to hone in on what you're eating and your satiety cues. Number three, remove distractions. I'm as guilty as the next person of grubbing in front of the TV or computer, but I'm telling you, it's a bad habit. How many times have you sat down to watch a show with a bag of popcorn and before you knew it, the whole thing was gone? That's called mindless eating. If you're focused on Netflix, you're not focused on your food and you'll miss your fullness cues. Number four, slow down. It takes your brain 20 minutes to register fullness. If you scarf down your meal in five minutes, you're still going to feel hungry even if you've eaten enough to physically satisfy your body. Put down your fork between bites, engage in conversation with your fellow diners, take a sip of water. Taking time to savor your meal will both help you identify your fullness cues 
and have greater satisfaction in your meal. And that is a very broad overview of intuitive and mindful eating. I learned about these concepts about five years ago and it changed my life. I was a diet obsessed fitness junkie who obsessively tracked calories and was always trying to drop those last five pounds. Spoiler alert, that never happened. When I stopped obsessing about food and gave myself permission to enjoy it, I found freedom and surprisingly didn't gain any weight. I know that's a big fear for many people when they hear about intuitive eating. They think it means that you're giving up. You're not giving up. You're giving your body the ability to find its happiest weight and your mind a chance to be at peace. Lastly, I want to touch on how eating a predominantly plant-based diet fits into all of this. To some, eating no or limited animal foods is a form of restriction in food rules. I think it really depends on the reasons behind your decision. If you're following a plant-based diet simply because you want to lose weight, it's probably not going to work for you. If, however, you choose to eat this way because it aligns with a lifestyle rooted in respect for animals, the planet, and your own overall health, and you simply don't want to eat meat anymore, it isn't a rule, but a preference. I don't want to eat meat, so I don't. I do on occasion want to eat eggs and dairy, hence the predominantly in my predominantly plant-based philosophy. This is how I honor my body and my hunger, but also my health and ethical ideals. Your approach may be different. I know many strict vegans who also practice intuitive eating. You have to figure out what works for you. If you want to learn more about intuitive and mindful eating, I recommend you check out the OG dietitians who created it. I'll leave a link to their info below. And if you're interested in trying my predominantly plant-based eating approach, grab my free seven day meal plan below. And please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more evidence-based nutrition information and healthy original recipes. I'm Whitney. Thanks for watching.